it's not like the greatest time in NFT world no. right now. Um, and so how, you know, what what do you think that's going to shine have a cloud over the event or how <sighs> how are question. you thinking of talking to people you know, about that luckily for our small so the for everyone who's listening if you're not educated there's been a major correction on pricing there was way too much frothiness you know Randy it's a very unique answer to V friends and Vcon i think under normal circumstances it could have been a bigger deal the fact that i've put out hundreds of videos in the last 15 months saying 99% of the NFTs in the market are going to zero. Everything's way too overpriced. <laughs> this is internet stocks 1997. So many people in the V Friends community heeded my call and didn't overextend themselves. Didn't spend money they couldn't afford to lose. Aren't over leveraged. So yeah, look, I mean I think everybody feels better when their V Friend is $60,000 instead of $27,000, you know, you lose money on paper, it never feels good, even though you haven't cashed it in yet. Luckily, and not luckily, it's the wrong word, properly because of the work I've put out for the last 15 months educating on this clear thing that was gonna happen based on everyone's behavior, I feel like we as a community in V Friends land absorbed the blow a lot better than other places. Mm -hmm. We didn't speak about the floor price or how much money or what boats we were gonna buy with it. It was more <laughs> about character development, 50 year project, you know, be prepared, be careful. This is volatile. I would say over and over, I'm like, I'm glad it's going well, but I will, and, and it happened. I'm like, when the market corrects, V Friends will not be able to not get sucked in with it because it's just gonna happen. So look, I think, you know, I was very concerned 10 days ago, 15 days ago, when the market was clearly starting the process of correcting. I've been very happy with the tone and temperament of our Discord and our Twitter. I think, I think you, you reap what you put in the work on, and I'm just incredibly proud that we were over-communicating aggressively yep. on that these prices were not sustainable and people need to be thoughtful. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you and I have lived through this many times before. I, we've had, you and I both, I'm sure, have had just millions of dollars of phantom wealth vanish and come back and vanish I mean, let's, again. Let's, I mean, go, it's... let's go to the one that probably taught me the most. So I, you know, through your help, was able to be an investor in Facebook years before its IPO. It IPOs at 42 and it goes to 19. Yep. And I remember <laughs> talking to so many of our mutual yeah. friends who all had a hell of a lot more stock than I did because they actually worked at Facebook mm -hmm. and like had real And wealth, had spent it in their minds. Had spent it in their minds <laughs> and really panic sold in the 30s, in the teens. Mm -hmm. And today, I mean, I don't, I've never told you this, I don't know if you know this, at this exact second, I have still not sold one share of Meta mm -hmm. since the day I bought it. Wow. And so, and what, and I'll tell you what upsets me about that. What upsets me about that is there was a lot of people who worked for three, four, five years, 15 hours a day mm -hmm. at Facebook before it went IPO and panicked when I had double conviction. I wasn't really buying, like in hindsight, I was so, I had so much conviction. I didn't have a lot of liquid at that time, but there was nothing I was more sure of than that $19 a share Facebook was the best <laughs> deal that I had ever come across. I didn't, I couldn't buy more per se, but when I think about that journey, that's how I feel now. I mean, this weekend I spoke to my financial team, I'm like, I need to buy more CryptoPunks during this downtime. <laughs> like, I believe in yeah. it. I believe in it. And and I want to, you know, you think about Ethereum going to proof of stake this summer. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of, you know, rationale if you're educated. I learned a lot. I learned when Facebook went through that, how many people talked about Facebook with no knowledge about Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. All the jokes that I see on Twitter about NFTs being down are just from people who love to razz, who, who lean into cynicism, who haven't spent a single hour educating themselves on what's going on and treat everything like blanket. Let me explain to everybody, this will land in two seconds. Just because Beanie Babies crashed in value doesn't mean stuffed animals were not gonna be important. Yes. <laughs> just because certain projects in NFT land have gone from $50,000 in value to $40, which we haven't seen that extreme, but. $50,000 to $8,000 doesn't mean the NFT movement's dead. Go Google, for everybody who's listening right now, go Google the internet is a fad and go read every article <laughs> that was written after internet stocks crashed in 2000. How the Wall Street Journal wrote articles, the internet is a fad. 
I mean, people love to tear down from a place of righteousness and from a place of being hurt and angry and cynical. And I love that because that's where I win. I, I deploy practical optimism and focus. And so, you know, it's funny when you started your question, I could see where you were about to go. And I, wanted, I didn't want to interrupt, but I wanted to jump in and say, good. Like mm-hmm. I feel a lot more comfortable today than I did three weeks ago because we've started the correction, which is when it gets more fun. Yeah. The internet was much more fun and, and had the right people in it in 2002, three, <laughs> four, five because all the gold rush people had left and gone into banking and other things. <laughs> Same thing's happening with NFT land. This will clean up. Many people will leave and go back to trading and you know selling homes in real estate or whatever fad they think is where they can make a quick buck. That person will get weeded out the innovators and the builders will build, and then in 2031, it'll be a way of life. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking about the fact that um, uh, Emirates Airline today announced that they're accepting Bitcoin. I don't see that headline going <laughs> everywhere. All of a sudden, Bitcoin has use. Now, I, I mean, I fly to Dubai a lot. I can now use my Bitcoin. That becomes utility. It's the best airline to fly on. That's <laughs> real really utility. <laughs> so, you know, so I think, I think people choose to see what they want to see. I think we've learned in the last decade in society that humans are very capable of seeing different things, you know, and um, and I'm very empathetic to why people don't see what's happening in NFT land. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. I've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that I didn't have to get educated to give me the hypothesis and the pattern recognition and the strategies that I'm deploying. I'm empathetic that a lot of people don't want to put in that work, can't put in that work, don't have the capacity for that work. So I understand where people come from. But this movie I've seen, I'm a, I'm a young man, I'm 46 years old, this is the third time I'm seeing the same exact mm. movie. The internet is not real. <laughs> Social media is not real. NFTs are not real. And I'm just gonna continue to you know, execute against what I see in consumer behavior and people's actual actions, not someone's opinion on people. Uh, and, and that's what I focus on. 